Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I shed light on things that are not always talked about with conversations about expanding love. The Elizabeth Cunningham Show starts now. Hi, welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. I am your host, Elizabeth Cunningham. And today we are talking about open relationships. And uh, I often get the question, you know, what's the difference between polyamory and open relationships? Because I'll say that sometimes I'll be like, oh, talk about polyamory. And we also talk about open relationships and people are like, oh, what is the difference between polyamory and open relationships? And today our guest um, is Gwen LaCour and she is going to be answering that question and many more questions that we have about open relationships. And I am so excited. So if you've ever been curious about open, like what the heck is an open relationship and how does it work and how is it different and what are the nuances and why are people even in open relationships in the first place? Like, why would you even do that? Um, and why is it so trendy right now? Like, it seems to be like the thing to do is like be in an open relationship. And so is it just like a fad? So anyway, all of this is going to be explored and answered and talked about. Um, and I'm going to introduce our guest. Um, Gwen LaCour was born in France and she lives in New Zealand and has been living in New Zealand for the past eight years and started off as a certified life coach and uh, slowly specialized in uh, are starting to specialize in couples therapy and NLP and relationships in general and has spent uh, has been in an open relationship for the past seven years now I can't read that's why I can't speak because I can't read <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and as you've been you know as she's been talking about it on her social platform she realized it was something that she was really pas passionate about and creating awareness around, you know, other relationship options that are available um, besides monogamy. You know, that's what we talk about on this show is like, what else is available besides monogamy? So Gwen, I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here too. Uh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, you've set some expectations there, so I hope I'm going to reach them. <laughs> you're it's this is going to be great this is going to be awesome we're going to have a great time we're going to talk about open relationships and that and it is it's it's what you specialize in in you know your business practice but it's also something that you do in your life you know as well and um and I guess like my first question is all this is all and this is always my first question is like why why open relationships why would someone be in an open relationship mm. Um, I see it as a great compromise between um, wanting to be single because you are not finding your one like the society is selling you, right? That soulmate concept and then you're trying and then you're kind of not failing, but not managing to find someone that really fit with who you really are and who you want to be. Um, so that's one side. And then on the other side, you actually want to be in a relationship with someone. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I feel like open relationship is this great compromise in between those two worlds, right? Where you can make it work if you're feeling, I don't know, there are different reasons why people are in open relationship, but um, a difference of libido, of desire, of sexual needs um, are usually a common reason why people are in open relationship mm -hmm. um, or just wanting to be able to really um, explore your sexuality while being uh, in a safe place with someone that you know and is here to support you. Mm. 
Yeah. I mean, it does, it does sound like a lot of freedom and mm -hmm. a lot of room for creativity. Yes. You know, I, yeah. And I think that that's what's hard to grasp about open relationships is because it is so broad that it's like, but what is it? But what is it really? Right. <laughs> I think like, uh, do what people want an answer, you know, like they're like, but I want like what it is, right? The creative <laughs> part of, of the concept of open relationships is that everybody can create their own relationship with their partner. So that's the creative process is like mm -hmm. you get into this place where you are with someone and you're like, what do we do? What do we create? Let, let's find an agreement between just the two of us that is going to make it work, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, like you said, it's a lot of freedom to explore things and to try and to see what you like or not, which I love it for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. I love, I mean, I, I also love that. I love the concept of like being able to explore. Um, and I think, you know, and I guess before going down that rabbit hole of like, um, you know, the juxtaposition between like traditional relationships and open relationships, it's, I think this is, I think people do see this as more of like a trend. You know, I think that it is more like a, like a fad, you know, like being in open relationships right now is like the cool thing to do. At least that's kind of how I see it like dismissed sometimes. It's like, oh, that's just like a phase that you go through. It's not real you know, or like quote unquote real, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like, what do you, what are your thoughts about like this being like a trendy thing to do or like a phase or a fad in someone's life? Um, I think it's becoming a trend because we are talking a lot more about it, mm -hmm. including you and I, right? Mm -hmm. And so we are raising awareness around options to live your relationship. So people are now more aware that it's an option, so they are trying it. And because we may be potentially missing a little bit of um, examples in our life of couples that we know that are in a a functional healthy open relationship we have the idea that it may be just a phase and that we're going to try and that it may change it may change later on if it doesn't work which is a, a complete valid option to be honest um mm -hmm. a lot of people see it as just um a sexual thing it's just about sex and so mm -hmm. because your libido will change when you get older you will automatically go back to a monogamous type of lifestyle so I think that's why people see it as something that you cannot sustain for too long, uh, that it cannot be healthy or valid long term. Um, I, I think the concept of open relationship in itself is not just about the sexual freedom, it's about um, the ability to know that there is the option there, if it was to happen, to create connections with people. And it doesn't have to include sex. It can be just about flirting with someone else without your partner getting jealous. Um, and so I think this can be really valid for a very long time. You know, it doesn't have to be just a phase in your in your relationship. And I think when you start an open relationship and it works well and you get used to that freedom, you kind of want to stay in this in this state of great communication and no jealousy experiencing some cool things like compassion uh, yeah we can talk about that uh, later on but yeah um so trend trend like yeah people like to try new things i think they've seen to their monogamy is maybe not working as well um mm -hmm. we are in this generation where we had a lot of parents that were divorced so we kind of know that we are not going to be married our whole life with the same person so I don't think we trust as much the concept of monogamy anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people want to try new things. We're curious. We are a curious generation. So <laughs> yeah, it's different. You know, it's like, oh, different. I want to try. <laughs> yeah, totally. I kind of see the same thing uh, where it's like, okay, can, you know, because we, we get these statistics like, you know, I think in the United States, it's like, it's gotten up to over 70% of marriages end in divorce or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and like lots of people have multiple marriages throughout yeah. their life. Right. Um, and, and I do, I do think that, you know, kind of the younger generation, 
Um, not to say that people who, uh, you know, are in older generations don't, you know, practice open relationships or non-monogamy in some way, because they totally do. Um, but I think definitely for the younger generation, it's like looking at this, these statistics of like, well, I guess marriage doesn't really work. And why doesn't it work? And instead of being like, well, we'll just make it work some way. It's like, well, what other alternatives are there? Like, if it's not working, why isn't it working? And I think that you know, what we're discovering um, is that why it isn't working is because you we do want to be in multiple relationships, at least for some people, or to like have it be more fluid in some way, yes. right? Like, exactly. yeah, and I think that, you know, because that's, that's one of the misconceptions that I see is that like when you're in multiple relationships that it looks like multiple monogamous relationships when actually it doesn't look like that, mm. right? It's so it's just like, and again, it's kind of like that creative part of like, and I love that you brought up like even flirting, yeah. you know, because it's like, that's, that's something that I see, you know, you see in, um, uh, I don't know, just like conversations around uh, monogamous relationships where it's like, oh, well, I don't even want my partner to like flirt with another person where it's like, yeah, when you have this like kind of more open-minded sense of relationships, it's like, yeah, my partner could flirt with someone else. Like, what if, what if my partner, you know, had friends and, and even some relationships where it's like friends of the same sex, um, where they're like, oh, I don't want, you know, my partner to even have like a lot of friends because that would take away. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, sorry, you go, you go. No, 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 go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're slowly realizing that, um, like I was talking about the soulmate concept, we're kind of stepping out a little bit of this idea that our partner is going to fulfill all our needs, needs for social connection, needs for sexual uh, fulfillment and stuff like that, or sexual exploration or um, all of this. And so we're slowly realizing that friends, family is important and potentially getting appreciated by a stranger in the street or in a bar is as important <laughs> for your self-confidence, you know? And I think it's great that people are slowly realizing that, that it doesn't have to come from one person only, I think it's uh, the way I see it, right? Is mm -hmm. it releases a lot of pressure on the partner when they realize mm -hmm. that it's okay, someone else can do it. And, and my partner is actually gonna be even happier with this. Um, yeah. yeah. I love that. Okay, well, we're gonna head off to a break, but what we're gonna talk about after a break is like this concept of what you, you said earlier, compersion, but it's this idea of that your partner could actually be happy for you, that you are in other relationships or that you're engaging in flirting or whatever it is, but that your partner could actually be like happy about that. And I think for some people, that's just like a mind blowing concept. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know a lot of people that that's a mind blowing concept for. So I really want to talk about like your partner actually being happy for you, having relationships outside of your current relationship. So after our break, that's what we're going to, that's one of the things, just one of the things we're going to talk about. Beautiful. We are back from our break and we're here again with Gwen LaCour talking about open relationships and where we left off was talking about this idea of compersion and what compersion is, is being happy for your partner when your partner is with another person. And so how does compare, like, how does compersion work? How does, and how does compersion work in open relationships? <laughs> how does it work? I think, um, to be honest, it took me a while for me to, to start experiencing it. Mm -hmm. I think you need to be uh, in a stage of your relationship where you've passed all the jealousy issues that you may have been experiences, experiencing, sorry, that um, you're feeling confident in who you are, that you do not have insecurities anymore and once you've passed all of that which is one of the best thing about open relationship you actually have to do the work uh, once it's done then you can experience that where your partner is getting excited because they have a date potentially <laughs> 
and you see the excitement in them when they're able to talk about it and it's so cute it's super cute <laughs> and they're like getting all excited about making plans and then you i think the best part of it is them realizing that you're excited for them and then when you start working like as a team is like where are you taking them cool do you think that this would be better oh this place is too noisy you're never going to be able to talk or are you going to be wearing that shirt really or <laughs> yeah, i think that t-shirt is a lot better you know <laughs> and suddenly you're actually part of the experience and and then your partner is like cool she's actually completely on board with that and it's awesome for them it, it's feeling like that freedom of being themselves and experiences, experiencing love in a different way. Um, so compassion, awesome feeling. I was like, when I, I started having it, it was like, oh my God, it feels amazing. And then I sent my partner away on his date and then he came back the day after, <laughs> really excited. And he was just so happy to be able to tell me what happened and to share the story. And I felt really happy for him. Like, it's like a um, beautiful um, love. Like, it's, I don't know how to, it's like unconditional love mm. that you kind of feel. It's really peaceful and really nice. I just wish everybody could just experience that feeling, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, compersion. And, and I agree with you, you know, and that, that was the same for me. Like, compersion conversion took a while for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I oft, I, I also found um, that I, uh, and I haven't talked very much about like my own story on this show yet. Um, but when I first started out inside of polyamory, which is separate from open relationships, but when I first started out in polyamory, I was kind of like a wrecking ball. Like I was just like, I'm just going to date everyone and sleep with everyone. And, you know, like... <laughs> I'm just gonna, if, if anybody knows me, like I do everything 110%, like immediately. <laughs> and what I noticed for myself with compersion was that with some relationships, it was easier than with other relationships. And, uh, and I think that it, you know, it's this testament to when you, you, brought this up, but it's this testament to, you know, different things get brought up with different relationships, like different types of jealousy or insecurities or, you know, things that you tell yourself, you know, about your partner, right? Like the stories that we make up. So Brene Brown says it in that way, right? The stories we tell ourselves. Yes. Um, and I think with some partners, um, the dynamic kind of fosters really great communication from the beginning and True. so that and it was really easy for me to feel that compersion in those relationships but in some relationships it's like you know neither of us were at a point where we could fully openly communicate or didn't even know how to like communicate our insecurities and how we were feeling and the jealousy that was arising for us and so it was harder it was harder to feel that compersion in those relationships because we hadn't like you said we hadn't worked through all yeah. of those things that we needed to to really kind of come out come out on the other side right um, and so, yeah, I think that that's really beautiful. And I also think that that's really worth um, stressing because uh, I often see it in, um, you know, forums online where people are kind of beating themselves up because yeah. they're like, oh, well, I haven't felt compersion, you know, is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with, you know, is this lifestyle, you know, not for me because I haven't felt compersion yet. Um, and so I think that that's really important to stress is that, you know, sometimes you have to, you got to work through your own stuff first yeah. to really be able to come out, you know, on the other side of that. I, I use um, an analogy, actually two analogies for, depending on the clients with whom I'm working with or who is telling me that. And I know it's different because we're talking about sexual matters in general or dates and it's a little bit different. But um, if, if your work life is crap and you're not where you want to be in your career and then your partner comes back home and tell you, tells you they've just got that amazing promotion, it's harder to feel extremely happy for them because you are struggling yourself 
to understand what's wrong with you and you're like okay and I think if you're able to understand okay this is because I would like my career to be a bit different if you're able to talk about it with your partner if your partner is understanding that okay I know my partner is not where they are at, at the moment in the career and it may be a little bit difficult for them to have compassion like you know if communication is there and you understand your own insecurities it works well so I usually do that analogy and also um becoming a mom for example if if you're trying to become a mom and you're having some issues for example and then your best friend comes back and you're like i'm pregnant <laughs> after one night stand or something like that it's a little bit harder to be happy for them right <laughs> right no absolutely that, that no those are great analogies yeah, yeah that's really great and i think um yeah and i think that it really does come down to that like being able to have that self-awareness yes Yes. and yeah that self-awareness and then being able to communicate that and and I know that that's something that you help people do with what you do as a life coach um what are some other things that you help people create in their with themselves or whether or in their relationships to help to help them create these types of relationships um I help them going through what type of boundaries do I need, Mm. right? I always say boundaries is not something to push people away, it's to actually let them in, Mm. uh, in a way that is going to be loving. And so uh, I help them understand what boundaries they need uh, for them to feel happy in their relationship, because we all have those different needs. Uh, why we are in a relationship right open or not uh, monogamous or non-monogamous uh, do we do I want stability do I want um, acknowledgement do I want status um, some people like to have the status of a wife of a girlfriend of a boyfriend so what type of boundaries can I have in my relationship if we open it that is going to help me keep this essential need for me alive uh, mm-hmm. And I, we tried to work out which boundary is more fear-based, which is not a great boundary, and which one is more need-based mm-hmm. with this idea that it's an important need for your relationship to be alive. Um, mm-hmm. So that's one of the work that we do. Um, I, I have my favorite thing is to have more like a value, value type of relationship-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes boundaries can be really specific and Mm -hmm. it actually stops that freedom that you were talking about um where if you decide to open your relationship because you want to explore your your sexuality for example Mm -hmm. with let's say uh, same gender right um if your partner is like okay but you can't um you can't date anyone in that city here you can't date anyone if we're traveling you can't kiss them on the mouth or like whatever boundaries you're feeling like putting on place it actually if I, like you have to think so much about what you're doing that it's kind of stopping that freedom right mm. um so i like to make people work more on the values that are important for them mm. and instead of having boundaries that are quite specific they have values that are a little bit more general so uh, what value is really important for you respect like if you do whatever but the main value is that we respect each other what is respect what does that mean cool and i make them talk about what is really important in terms of values in general and to make sure that the open relationship goes through those those values and is a little bit less restricting i think Mm -hmm. and but still a really good foundation for the non-monogamy in my opinion (laughs) yeah yeah well and I I love that I love that because then you can use those values as more of a filter right and so yeah so that way you can be like okay is this um is this boundary that we're creating does it have the respect that both of us want you know and like and there's so many different values that you can have I was actually just talking to a partner about this the other day we're like what values do you have in relationships? Um, and it's just like, and there's so many, right? There's like yeah. curiosity and connection and openness and, you know, shared experiences. I know I had a partner a long time ago who like his like number one value was like shared experiences, right? Nice. And so we created a lot around shared experiences because that was really important. I love that. I love that. <laughs> just like, yes, 
that's exactly it. <laughs> I, I like because they're also a really general concept that mean different things to everybody. So it's also a really great conversation to have with your partner to kind of get to know them better. Mm. Uh, like you were talking about generosity. What does that mean? Like, what does that mean for you? Okay, this is what it means. And oh, but that doesn't mean the same thing to me. Cool. Well, I'll make sure that I'm getting to this. <laughs> with you because I know this is what it means to you you know like it's a really great conversation started too for the relationship so yeah um yeah. I, I think a lot of people they're not really um familiar with the idea of non-monogamy may start with specific boundaries and it's normal it's it's a, a first way of stepping out of the comfort zone so mm -hmm. We try to put those little boundaries to feel more comfortable, you know, and it's not too big and too vast. And then the more um, familiar they are with the concept, they actually get to that bigger value type of concept. Hmm. Oh my gosh. I, yes. Like, I'm just like, I just want, yes. Shout <laughs> like, I'm just like, say it louder for the people in the back. Um, like, <laughs> because it's true. Like, you know, you want your boundaries and you want the agreements that you're creating in your relationship to expand as your relationship expands. You know, your relationship isn't stagnant. Your relationship is this growing thing that you're creating. To, and regardless of whether you're in an open relationship or not, right? Yeah. And so I think, oh my gosh, I just, wow. Okay. Yep done mic drop Gwen went Gwen <laughs> <Jordan. it>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's beautiful okay so when we come back we're going to go on another break um and when we come back from uh, our break you know I want to dig a little bit more into like the ickiness you know, because I think that, you know, and a lot of what we've been talking about is just so beautiful and brilliant, but like, I think people do have like real fears and real concerns and real stuff that they need to work through. And so when we come back from break, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into like, what are the fears? What are the concerns? And then, you know, what do you, how, how do do you see people kind of overcoming these things or can they be worked through right um so that's what we're going to talk about when you come back from break so we'll see y'all soon all right welcome back from the break welcome back to the elizabeth cunningham show we are here with gwen lacour and We've been talking about open relationships and we've been talking about the creativity behind open relationships and different possibilities and how you can create them and what kind of boundaries and how you can set boundaries and even feeling compersion for your partner, that feeling of happiness when you see your partner happy with someone else. Um, and uh, now we're gonna dig a little bit more into like the ick, the ick Ouch. part of open relationships because, and all relationships have ick, you know, there, I think that that's important to remember is that regardless of whether you're monogamous or non-monogamous or however it is that you choose to create your relationships, that every relationship has ick in it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything bad about the relationship. It just means that we're humans dealing with things. So I want to start there. Like, it's okay to have ick. That's where I want to start. <laughs> Tolerance for the ick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but what do you, so, and, and then I want to open it up to you and say, you know, what, what do you see people um, dealing with in open relationships? Like, I know jealousy is a thing, um, but, and, and like, how do you see people dealing with jealousy? You know, how, what other things do people really have to deal with and confront in these types of relationships? I'm going to say something that may be a little bit controversial for some, but I believe the main issues you will find in non-monogamy and the reasons why potentially an open relationship may not work or exactly the same reasons why a monogamous relationship may not work. Lack of trust, lack of communication, and jealousy. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to have any shows after this. <laughs> You're answering all the questions. <laughs> be like, just listen to Gwen's episode. Uh, that's... <laughs> no, 
I, yeah. Okay. Say more about that. Say more about, yeah. Okay. Lack of trust, lack of communication yeah. and jealousy. Like that's where you see things really stem from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So most of the issues I can see in open relationship are usually people uh, not communicating enough or miscommunicating, right? Uh, people forgetting, like you said, that we all flowed, that we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And so we have um, an idea of our partner and suddenly they do something different or we have expectations and then suddenly they do something that is not reaching those expectations. And we kind of um, feel like we've been lied to right or and, and we just forget that our partner is flowed and we are flowed we all flowed and if we accept that that we're not perfect and that we all have our different filters for communications uh, then suddenly we pay more attention to what our partner is saying instead of what we're hearing and it's a little bit different in how we communicate so if you can kind of understand that I think that's kind of the role that we have as coach as kind of being in the middle and translating I, I see it as a role of translation is like you are saying that but you are hearing that mm -hmm. so <laughs> for the person that's saying that do you understand that this is what they're hearing <laughs> and and for the person hearing that do you understand this is what they're saying you know mm -hmm. and the, it's like oh and how is that making you feel and then suddenly you add more to it like that that feeling that is coming and then you make people dig a little bit more into the emotions coming um, so miscommunication or lack of communication, lack of trust. We don't believe that our partner is telling us the truth or that our partner is acting with the best intentions, which is something that's a little bit harder to deal with, to be honest, because if you're not trusting that your partner is kind and gentle and wanting to do things with the best intention, but not to hurt you or to prove a point, that's a little bit more complicated to deal with. Uh, in monogamy and non-monogamy right right yeah um, that's just like a relationship <laughs> like yeah. principle in general yeah. you know, that's that's also just like human relation you know that's not even yeah. you know romantic relationships yeah. right yeah um oh, yeah. I, I usually uh, people ask me oh but it's cheating it's cheating and I'm like well there is the, the cheating concept in non-monogamy is a little bit different than in monogamy where in monogamy we kind of uh, only talk about having sex with someone else and your partner in non-monogamy, the cheating part is, for me, is the lying, is the lack of trust and the lack of honesty. So mm -hmm. if if my partner is lying to me on something, then I'll feel cheated on. Mm -hmm. And so being able to trust your partner is super important. So exercises for that and sometimes patience. And once again, understanding that your partner may not be perfect, but they're trying their best uh, is the best thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, what was the last one? We had lack of trust. Oh, and jealousy. <laughs> jealousy <laughs> a small concept. <laughs> what? Just that, just jealousy. <laughs> <you know. laughs> um, I believe jealousy is anchored in insecurities. So it's, it's based on something we believe we don't have or we are not. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to compare ourselves with someone else. And obviously... If you don't have to compare yourself with someone else, you don't have to deal with your jealousy, right? Which is what happens in monogamy. But as soon as you become non-monogamous and then your partner start dating other people, suddenly you compare yourself with that other person. And what you're using to compare yourself is how your partner is feeling. Mm -hmm. And we tend to forget that there is this awesome thing called new relationship energy that is really awesome. <laughs> which is this new energy that you feel when you're meeting someone and this all new and mysterious and exciting. And so you see your partner getting so excited with someone else and you're like, oh my God, like my partner's not like that with me right now, right now. And we forget to think, but they were like that with me before. <laughs> Right. right or you use that as like the comparison right yeah. they're like oh you're like oh you used to be with me like that but now you're not yes. anymore yes. and you forget or you don't know that it's like well that's the new relationship energy and all new relationships <laughs> have okay. new relationship energy and yeah if you've been with someone for three years five years you know now you know you don't have that new relationship energy but you did you did at the very at the very beginning yeah totally so it's comparing apples and 
and peers really or it's 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 yourself comparing to yourself to to instagram photos you know it's, it's <laughs> the same idea is is um you get jealous because you have an idea and you're comparing yourself to this idea and it's like you can't compare the two of them so if you've been with your partner for a while and then your partner's getting excited with someone else or they're trying something new with someone else it's like you need to, to kind of dig deeper and say okay why am i feeling jealous right now um sometimes what i see is more envy more than jealousy um which is more i would like to be like my partner and and experiencing that energy with someone else mm-hmm. so it's a little bit of a different concept uh or sometimes i've got um the comment of well you just went on that awesome date with someone else you've never taken me on that type of date <laughs> and, and why you know like i want to have the same experience than that person and it's all about once again communicating well, did you tell your partner before that you wanted to go on a date like that? No. Did you ever express that that was something that was interesting you? Nope. Did you may- maybe mention that you did that with an ex before and you hated it? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and so now your partner's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that with you. Right. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's really funny. Like it's um, funny. It's not funny when you go through it, but once you start understanding where it comes from, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start, yeah, abs- I, I absolutely agree. It's like when you can understand the mechanism of it, it's like that's when I know that my clients are like coming out of it is when they start to laugh at themselves. Yes. When they start to see the absurdity. When you, you know, because I love that question of like, well, did you ever tell your partner that? Did you communicate it? And did you communicate it in the way that you just communicated it to me? Because maybe you thought you communicated it, but when you just said it to me, you said it exactly how you wanted to say it. Yeah. But when you said it to your partner, you were being careful, you were being timid, you were, you know, trying, you were being strategic, you know, something like that. So you didn't say it in the straightforward way that you just said it to me. So like, That could be, you know, and like you said, you know, lack of trust, lack of communication and jealousy are like those top three things that you see. And they all kind of tie together too. Yes. Yes. (laughs) They're all just like conglomerate. Yes. Um, Yeah. And so what would you, uh, um, uh, what would you tell someone who's dealing with either one, two, or all three of these things, you know, what's what's your kind of like go to, you know, do this or best advice or best practice for that? If they're dealing with the three things, Mm -hmm. um, patience, patience towards themselves because they will need to grow their confidence and deal with the insecurity, which is like a personal individual work. Mm -hmm. Patience with their partner, on the fact that if they need to build that trust, it's like t- telling a teenager, um, you can go to that party, but you have to be back at midnight, right? And if your teenager is doing it a few times, then you start building that trust that if you push it to one or two in the morning, they will respect that, right? You know, it's like, a, I see it as a, <laughs> it's a funny analogy, but- um, <laughs> I, totally, building- I totally get that though. <laughs> Yeah, it's building that trust. So if you tell your partner, look, um, uh, let's start at the moment where I'm happy for you to go on a date with someone else, but I would prefer if you do not have a sexual experience right now uh, and maybe, or maybe do not sleep at their place and come back home after you've been on your date. If your partner is able to to do that while you're getting comfortable with the idea of non-monogamy, then you're obviously gonna trust your partner that they have the best intention and everything. So that's patience with your partner. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, I think it's it's all about that because communication too takes time because we we start with so many assumptions that our partner can read our mind, that our partner communicate the same way we communicate. And, you know, like we're actually, <laughs> if you right. kind of slow down, it's like, wait, they are their own person with their own filter and their own background, culture, experiences, mm-hmm. education, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
it's helping a lot. So patience. I think we're all under construction. I always, I always say that we're all under construction. Mm. But um, we we spend our twenty first years kind of building ourselves and building a home based on what we can see, what we hear, etc. And then after that, it's unbuilding to rebuild. Mm, oh my gosh. <laughs> How, so, how many mic drops? How many mic drops was that? I think that was like three at least, right in a row. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take another break, and when we come back, um, I'm going to we're gonna talk about you know what are the best practices here. Okay, great. We've talked about how it can be and how it's creative. We talked about the ickiness, but it's like, okay, now we have all of this information. Now what do we do? Like, what do we do with this information? Um, and so that's what we're gonna talk about when we come back. All right, welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show where we are courageously expanding love and we're here with Gwen LaCour and we're talking about open relationships and we've talked about how um, how creative and fun open relationships can be and like why do people get in them and we talked about you know kind of the ickiness of open relationships too like the things that you really have to deal with in yourself in order for those relationships to work and so I feel like and for those of you who are just joining, please re-watch all of this because <laughs> Gwen has had some serious mic drops this entire time. I'm just like, yeah, what? Yeah, what you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you've given us all of this really amazing, insightful information. Um, what, what now? Like, what can people actually do with this knowledge? Like what's next? Okay, so I think um, talking about it is cool, but experiencing it is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and you can talk as much as you want with your partner about the idea of being non-monogamous. The day you're gonna experience it for the first time will be really different. Um, you may think that you're completely fine and then it's gonna happen and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um how to take the first step though and how to start i think i usually um recommend talking about their sex life in general mm -hmm. if you can't talk with your partner about your sex life it's kind of like a bit of a worry for me because mm -hmm. uh, it means that you may not be able to communicate as much as you want after mm -hmm. so being able to understand uh how is our sex life cool not that great okay why can we do something about it um because i think if you open your relationship because you want to fix it is not the best way to do it um mm -hmm. i think i see open relationship more as a way to explore individually your sexuality more than trying to save the relationship it's like having a kid when you're about to break up that never works right um because you get tired <laughs> you get emotional and then you don't have any patience so, you're, eh, and <laughs> so um same with non-monogamy i think you need to be having a strong relationship and strong relationship doesn't mean that everything has to be perfect it just means that you're able to communicate when issues are gonna um arrive arise sorry um and so one of the first thing is, yeah, talk about your sexual life. Do you have any issues with your partner? I don't know, like I'm going to go into really basic things and I don't know, maybe I'm completely out of what I can say on this, on this video, but um, <laughs> masturbation, sex toys. Are you feeling jealous about that? Because if you're already feeling jealous with your partner um, individually having fun with themselves, well, if you bring someone else in there, it's going to be really complicated. So talk about that. How important is sex for you? Why do you have sex? Is it because you're trying to connect with someone else? Is it because you emotionally connect because you want to release some pressure? Um, talk about all of that because that helps you to understand why your partner is going to have sex with someone else. Do you just feel um, that you want to feel appreciated? Do you want to feel sexy? Do you want to feel validated? You know, like all of that. Uh, and then try to see which type of non-monogamy do you want to experience first swinging is an option right like you staying with your partner 
where you're having sexual experiences, but together, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good experience to have. Going to a sex club together, uh, you can just watch, you don't have to participate and see how you feel about it. Uh, taking it step by step instead of, of just going like in the extreme of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to this podcast last time about fetishes and it was really funny because it, it's not because you tell your partner that you like uh, potentially to be in an open space where you're having sex with your partner that it means that you need to go in the middle of a mall <laughs> and just have sex in front of everybody. Right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> there's like little steps by little steps and see how you feel about things, right? <laughs> Uh, it's the same, I think, with non-monogamy. Like, again, it's getting out of your comfort zone. So take it step by step. Uh, talk about it and try little things. So maybe just flirt with someone and nothing else. Or maybe just go on a date with someone else, but don't stay the whole night. Like, mm -hmm. all those little things can help if you're starting. Mm -hmm. If you're starting your open relationship. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And I think that it's, it is really important to um, take those small steps and that like no step is too small. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, no step is too small. And I think even like looking at dirty pictures on the internet yes. together is a step, yes. you know, like you don't even have to leave your house like just pull up on your phone, like dirty pictures. And it's just like, when you, and just ask each other, like, Hey, like, does like, what do you like about this? Like, does this excite you? You know, like, what do you like, you know, like getting curious and uh, um, being able to explore in the way that feels safest to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So being Beautiful. able to talk about your fantasies with your partner, obviously, or, or just um, one little test I usually say to my clients is if you're walking in the street um, and then you look at someone from the opposite gender and then you're like, oh, wow, she's really sexy. And you check how your partner feels about her. If your partner is getting jealous, then maybe try to check what's happening there. There is obviously something happening with your partner. Mm -hmm. If just talking about someone else is making them feel insecure, mm -hmm. um, how can you support them? I think it's um, it's important to remember that it's a relationship, which means that you're supposed to support each other during the journey. It mm -hmm. can't just be one is like doing whatever they want and the other one is struggling to, <laughs> to stay afloat, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Okay, so as we're wrapping up the show today, I want to ask you if there's one thing, if there's one thing that people take away <laughs> From the, are you seriously so many gems and that for anyone who's joining right now, go back and watch or listen to the whole thing. Um, but so many gems, what is the one thing that you want people to get out of listening to the show today or watching? Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think open relationship is the best way to become more confident in yourself was the support of your partner while exploring your sexuality mm. i think it's a beautiful way of experiencing intimacy and communication with your partner to a best level you can imagine mm. thank you yes. mm. all right <laughs> how can people find you how can people get a hold of you tell us tell us more about how we can reach out to you all right, so I've got a website. I've got a TikTok platform. It's not maybe the best to, to send me messages. Uh, Instagram is definitely the best place. Um, the pseudo is Munai, M-U-N-A-Y, open relationship. Um, same for the website.com, www.munaiopenrelationship.com. Um, I do have a book to deal with jealousy if you're in an open relationship uh that you can find on my website and on instagram too what's the name of your book dealing with jealousy oh dealing with jealousy oh there yeah. you go perfect awesome yes. all right okay. anything else that you want to share to share well first yeah. big thank you for you to welcoming me to to your show i think it's amazing what you're doing mm -hmm. i love that you are i think was the same idea that I have that the more we talk about it the more we normalize non-monogamy and the more people feel more like safer to try things even if it doesn't work out 
there's never it's never failure it's just experience and you may experience one day non-monogamy and decide it's not for you but at least it's a choice yeah Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, if you connected with Gwen today and really loved everything that she was talking about and you want to reach out to her, please go to her website, muniopenrelationships.com um, or her Instagram, um, muniopenrelationships. That's M-U-N-A-Y, open relationships. <laughs> nice. um, yes. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thank you, dear listener. We love you. We appreciate you. And as always, I am open for feedback um, and questions please send me your questions um, on the show so that we can get them answered. All right. Love all of you so much. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. You have been listening to the Elizabeth Cunningham show, courageously expanding love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on transformationtalkradio.com where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at elizabethannecunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.